Now that we know how double displacement reactions work, that essentially they're like square dancing, molecular square dancing, where the ions swap partners. Um, in this lesson, we're gonna look at just slightly more complex version, which is what do you do if polyatomic ions are involved? Well, the answer is really nothing new, just swap the ions. But of course, the hard part about it is, is knowing what subscripts to keep and which ones to, to get rid of. Because in that last lesson, what we said is every single time we see a subscript, we don't keep it at all in any way. So let's look at the, the challenge here we have when polyatomic ions in, are involved. So this is the nitrate ion right there, and you can see there's two of them. Why are there two of them? Well, the reason was because originally, uh, and let me get my marker back out here, originally calcium had a plus two charge, nitrate is a minus one charge, and so you can see that you need more negatives, and so you'd have a two. Now here's the important thing to notice that's different when you have polyatomic ions involved. This uh, subscript right there was only there because we checked charges with calcium. Since nitrate's about to get a new partner, we obviously don't want to keep that too, just like we said in the last lesson. But when we swap the partners, we're actually going to keep this three. Why? Because it's not there because we check charges. It's there because the nitrate ions formula is NO3. And that's why it's a good idea when you're doing these, these, uh, this lesson to have that polyatomic ion chart open so that you can see exactly what the formula is for the polyatomic ion. Now you probably noticed that I just paused the video and I went to grab mine too, but I'll have it linked for you. Um, so let's see, uh, where's nitrate? Yeah, nitrate is right there. It's NO3. It really is NO3. It's not NO, right? So that's why it's going to be really important to have this chart around uh, as you're working on things. So uh, so keep it open from that link. All right, there you go. Now let me clear the ink from this, the, from this slide here. I've got to clear the ink from the slide. Uh, all right, and let's see if we can figure out how to, how to swap the partners. Now, nothing else will have changed. So based on what we've done before, and let me, I, I don't know why it's bugging me to have a red marker, but based on what we did before, which two ions should we write down first? Calcium and aluminum, just as we have before, and we're going to spread them out by quite a bit. Now, calcium, its new partner is going to be which atom? N. And aluminum's new partner is going to be NO3. Now, remember, we're not keeping the two because that was there for, for subscript purposes. But nitrate, as we saw in the polyatomic ion chart, it's NO3. So we've got to keep that three. So that's what's really different in what we're doing here is my addendum, my additional piece to tip three, is keep subscripts that are part of polyatomic ions. And how do you know for sure? Well, um, any numbers outside of the parentheses are not part of the polyatomic ion, but any numbers that are in the parentheses uh, obviously are part of that polyatomic ion. And if there are no parentheses, then it tells you there's only one of those ions, and that subscript probably is a part of it. But you'll see as we go through it. Now, we do need to check charges, of course, so I want you to get out your periodic table and check charges here and tell me what the formula should be for, for calcium nitride. Well, that's plus two, that's minus three. I think to get uh, to get this balanced, we're gonna need three of the calciums and we're gonna need, need two of the nitrogens, right? And depending on where you're at in this, you know, um, some people are really happy with that explanation, but I would definitely still recommend writing it out, you know, and making sure that you're right if you're not super comfortable with that. But you see, I had to go that far to get to negative six and positive six to get it to, to balance. All right, we're good to go. And over here, in order for me to check this one, I know aluminum's plus three. Obviously, I'm going to have to go to the polyatomic ion chart to see nitrate. Let's see, nitrate is right there. It's negative one. Uh, oop, there we go. And so we need, do we need more aluminums or nitrates? Definitely nitrates. It's going to take three. And of course, so if we want three of these, we've got to put parentheses and we go like that. So you can see that was why we did not keep um, the two on this side is because the two was because we had checked charges with calcium. Here we're checking charges with aluminum. It's with a different cation, so it's going to have a different subscript. But that three that's part of the polyatomic ion, that has to stay. Okay, I guess I don't have to erase all of that because we're about to go try another one. Okay, let's look at this one. So here, the, the polyatomic ion is ammonium ion. So you've got your sheet out, you're looking to see where it is. Um, between these numbers, is it the four or the two that I'm actually gonna keep on the other side? It's the four, the four is part of ammonium. How do I know that? 
Well, it's hard for me to know that because I put this away. Ammonium is right here. It's on the left side of your sheet, um, depending on which sheet you have. Uh, so it's right there. So yeah, the four is part of it. And it's charged, by the way, is plus one. Okay, so that means that we're going to write down two things first. One of the things we're going to write down first is ammonium. Right, NH4. Not going to keep the two, but we're going to keep the four. And I spread it out. Which other cation is there? Mg. Very good. Ammonium's new partner is going to be nitrogen. And magnesium's new partner is going to be sulfur. That's right. So we've done that. Now all we have to do is check charges. Now this one, as you just saw on the polyatomic ion chart, uh, ammonium is plus one. Right, see it on the upper left right there? Very good. And uh, nitrogen, you can look up on a periodic table, and I want you to tell me what the formula would be. If this is plus one and that's minus three, clearly we're going to need three ammoniums. So I'm going to put it in parentheses and put a three around it. Did you remember the parentheses? Did you remember this four, which is part of it? You got to keep that, right? All right, we're good to go. We've checked charges. Let's do this one. Magnesium, I want you to look up its ion sulfur uh, uh, charge and tell me what the formula should be. Plus two, minus two, it's good to go. We don't need anything else. And in the end, we should always come back and erase these. Now, as I said in the last uh, uh, lesson, as we go through these, to speed these up right now, I might not balance all of the uh, equations. But I want you to stop the video here and balance this particular equation and then tell me what coefficients you get. Okay, well, if I'm balancing it, I see two ammoniums on this side and three on that side. So I think I'm going to, because I always start with polyatomic ions, I'm going to put a three here to get six ammoniums. I'm going to put a two here to get two times three is six ammoniums. Pretty good. Let's see. I see three sulfurs, right? Three sulfurs, because there's only one there times three is three. So I might put a three there. And then let's see, three sulfurs. Very good. Now, three magnesiums. Three magnesiums. Looks great. Uh, is two nitrogens. Yeah, there are two nitrogens because that two in front makes two nitrogens, right? So there we go. Three, one, two, three. And of course, if we were typing it into a computer, we'd need the one there. If we're not typing it into a computer, we don't have to worry about that. All right, very good. Let's try another one. Now here, I did not color code it. So what I need you to do is think about this. I know that this is not a polyatomic ion, right? Um, so I'm not going to keep that three. I'm not going to keep that two. But my question is, Look up carbonate on the polyatomic ion sheet and see, do I keep that three? Is it part of carbonate or is it there because I have three carbonates? It's not there because I have three carbonates. It's actually part of it. And there's two ways that I can know that, right? And actually, let me show you the color-coded version. The three is part of the carbonate. It's not there because of checking charges. There's two ways I can know that. One is just look up carbonate. Let's see, where's carbonate? It's right here, CO3. It's not CO. That's CO is not the formula for carbonate. So that's one thing. And the other is you guys know if carbonate was, if, if this formula was three carbonates and the carbonate was like that, it would be like that, right? There'd be parentheses, but that's not how it is. So the three is part of that, so we've got to keep it. Okay, which two ions do I write down first? Aluminum and potassium. Now, which partner does aluminum get? Like that. Uh, and I need that three on there. And then, uh, and then which partner does potassium get? Uh, bromide, very good. Now, if you check charges on this one, by the way, you probably have a periodic table. I'll show you my polyatomic ion chart if you would like. What's the formula for aluminum carbonate? Well, definitely aluminum is plus three, carbonate is two minus, so plus three, two minus. That means I'm gonna need two aluminums and three carbonates, agreed? Two aluminums, and if I have more than one of these, I gotta put parentheses around it, three carbonates. And what's the formula for KBr? Plus one, minus one, it's good to go as it is, okay? So, and then, as always, we erase our charges, and it's up to you if you wanna stop the video here and balance, you certainly can do that. It's great, great practice, um, because that's always the last thing that we would do. All right, let's look at this one. So now in this one, I believe that I'm about to show you the work that I would do. And I want you to look at this work and I want you to evaluate what I do right and what I do wrong. So I want you to get a head start. I'm gonna put a note here that stops the video and I want you to swap the ions, check the charges and get it all done correctly. And then I want you to watch how I do it. And I'm gonna ask you what mistake I made. 
Okay, here we go. So I wrote my ions. I swapped. Whoop! I swapped partners. I checked charges, and I'm done. I'll go. I'll show you again. I swapped my. I wrote down my ions. I swapped the partners, and I checked charges, and I got this. So what did I do wrong? You're absolutely right. The thing I did wrong was uh, right here in this step. Not not there. I did write down the cations, aluminum and magnesium. I swapped the partners. Aluminum now gets cyanide. So right, remember, whoop, and whoop, kind of like that. That's why it's double displacement. Um, but my mistake was right here. Sulfate, this four is part of sulfate. The three is not. That's just from checking charges. So I need a four right there. And so when I went to the final partner, I forgot to have a four right there. Yes, this is plus two and that's minus two and I didn't need more of them, but I do need that four there, which is in a weird place right at the moment. All right, very good. So that's how we tackle uh, polyatomic ions. If the subscript is part of the ion, we definitely need to keep it in there. But other than that, it's the exact same process as always. Now, we're probably going to stop here, I would guess. Our next assignment is probably going to have you practice this quite a bit. But we do have one more sort of step to double displacements before we move on, which is what do you do if there are transition metals involved? Have you noticed that all the ones we've been doing have aluminum and magnesium? There's been no iron or nickel or anything like that. You might wonder why that is. We're going to see that in the next lesson.